Hi guys, welcome to Industry Insights. I'm Clinton Hahn, and over the next few episodes, we'll be meeting with filmmakers and industry professionals to talk about all things gear, news, photography, and filmmaking. This episode, we'll travel to Newcastle, two hours north of Sydney, to meet Shane Burrell, the owner of Final Post. Now, Final Post is a cutting edge facility, which I think is one of the largest suites in the Southern Hemisphere. They specialize in color finishing, post-production, and service clients from Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, and across the Asia Pacific. I was lucky enough to work with Shane on a feature film I recently shot called Pop Up, which will be released in September. We also caught up with Simon Walker, an Adobe master trainer, and a G Technology ambassador on his recent trip here to Australia. So let's check it out. Hi, I'm Shane Burrell. I'm the owner of Final Post. I'm a colorist and I've been involved in post-production for over 15 years. The Final Post is a finishing facility. We have three color suites here. We have a, a theater for our theatrical work where we're running a digital vision new coder. And we have two other uh, smaller suites which are an assist and a broadcast suite with a resolve system in there. The Final Post came about because there's obviously a massive shift going on within the, you know, the content creation industry. Uh, particularly since you know the red camera and people are getting their hands on cameras that shoot large formats and higher bit rates and and you know formats that not everybody can always get the most out of so we thought let's create something that you know can service those people and give them the most uh, or give them the opportunity to get the most out of their pictures my brother and I spent um, almost six months designing it and then probably two two and a half years building it and we're very hands-on with the creation of it and uh, it kind of just became that way because again a necessity where in order to do something like this you've got to get a bit more hands-on um, and it's a little bit out of the box. I think one of the coolest things about working in a place like Newcastle we have the best beaches in the world and uh, when people come to, to work here they're, they're away from their everyday life they're away from their hometown they're away from all the pressures and they can totally zero in on the creative process and the work that we're doing. It's a dynamic work environment and uh, everything is designed to give people a really creative experience and also not to compromise on the tools that we use. I think for people that are wanting to be a colorist or get involved in post-production, one of the key ingredients is to really get hands-on with the tools. Don't just sit in the edit suite, but get out, get on set, um, you know, as a colorist, get familiar with cameras, get familiar with the way that light actually works, the way that different lenses affect and, and understand sort of that, that stuff outside of the room. Sure, you need to spend a lot of time in the room, on the tools, um, you know, working with other colorists and learning how they work and, and all that sort of stuff, watching tutorials online. But I, I really feel like one of the things that really has helped me is having that understanding on set and understanding what the cameras do and what, you know, the nuts and bolts of getting a picture is all about. Uh, so one of the things that we've really noticed coming from a finishing point of view is with the, you know, a lot more independent films being created and guys getting out there and shooting is that a lot of corners are getting cut all the time. And so, um, you know, it's, it's kind of an odd choice to have a finishing facility as big as ours to service these guys because is it something or one of those high priority things that they would want to do? Is it a necessity? And it's knowing which corners are the right ones to cut and which ones you can cut that, you know, doesn't compromise the, the finished product that you're trying to create. Being involved in colouring and post-production, we have a really interesting perspective on the filmmaking process. We essentially succeed or completely die based on everybody's work before us. So we're actually developing a methodology called Agile Post, which opens up the whole conversation with producers, with all your key crew, uh, right before the camera starts rolling to have input into the process and to some of the decision making that goes along with it. We can be really flexible to work in with people's projects depending on their budget and their needs and things like that. So we're really privileged to have this opportunity and we love working with artists and creative people that are really passionate about film. Hey guys, uh, I'm Clinton Hahn. This is Simon Walker. Hey, yeah. Uh, we're two GT ambassadors, and it just so happened that we're in the same country at the same time. Yeah, we're in Sydney. This is the first time I've been in Sydney. So, yeah. the first time in Australia. Yeah. So, let's talk about our drives. I mean, uh, what do you use on uh, your, your current setups at the moment? Well, I'm so on the road so much that mm. I tend to use um, the ones that are these size. I mean, this is um, that's the, uh, the G drive with uh, Thunderbolt. Yeah, and also use the EV series. But the reason, what I wanted to do was yeah. to, to give a little tip, 
is that the fact that this one, when we have ejected this safely, so I can I can do this. But you can this, pull it. Yeah. this uses um, uh, Thunderbolt. So when I'm on the road for, yeah. uh, using these things, you've only got so many ports on your laptop. So mm. you've got. Um, a USB 3 on this side, and you've got a USB on 3 on this side, yeah. and suddenly you run out of power. Mm. And so you don't always have the chance to be able to plug into power. Yeah. And also, if you buy a three USB 3 adapter, you can't plug too many drives in because they require a certain amount of power. So I, the reason that I use a bunch of these with the Thunderbolt still mm. is that although the SSD um, is hugely fast in terms of speed by USB 3. It means that I can take all my stuff with me without having to have masses and masses of luggage. So it's the, yeah. that was the, the real key thing. What's the first thing you think about when filmmaking? You think about, oh, camera setup and everything yeah. like that. But if you don't have your stuff backed up, yeah. then you know the, what's the point? You come back and you realize, ah, my, um, I didn't record the right thing, or I didn't back it up, or I lost my bag, mm. you know, that sort of thing. So yeah. it's, it's so important to have those, and I, I'm, I'm a bit of a <laughs> backup freak. Backup freak. So I, I back everything up on the drives, and I have duplicates, um, and I use um, this amazing program called Super Duper oh, okay. by Shirt Pocket. It costs yeah. $23 or something. Right. And then it means that it can do a smart backup of two drives and your main drive like mm. this. So when you're doing a presentation, yeah, yeah. Um, I always have duplicates on the presentation on multiple drives so that if there's a problem with the computer, I can just like plug it into a different computer and just mm. carry on yeah, so the yeah. audience doesn't have to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just one of those things that is just natural, but it's so easy when you are able to um, have, be able to rely on your drive. Yeah. It's going to work. Absolutely. You know, I really have to also give uh, some of their G-Rate um, mini drives the plug as well, mm -hmm. as well the G mini drives because they still utilize Firewire technology, which is fine because what I can do in this case, like I said, uh, on, a, on an older Mac model that I have, there's Thunderbolt ports and there's also USB, but there's also Firewire, which means then I can hook up Firewire and Thunderbolt and have multiple or not more drives yeah, yeah. on, on Absolutely. the Absolutely. You know, so. I've been in that situation before when you turn up, you've got to use somebody else's machine yep. and it's like, oh, here's your Firewire cable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've brought my Thunderbolt. Yeah. But I've also got my adapter, so yeah. here we go. So it's still good that, you know, the G technology is still making drives that cater yeah, exactly. to that technology as well. Great. Okay, cool. Well, uh, enjoy your stay. Thank you. I'm sure we will uh, cross paths again uh, eventually at some either G Tech event. Yeah, most probably, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, look out for Simon, he does a lot of online training as well. You can go to your website, um, you can check out my website if you want. And what you won't see uh, in part of this video is the next couple of hours where we'll just go talk rubbish about everything about how we our workflows and things like that. You can't get two filmmakers together without constantly sharing for hours and hours. Oh, do you use this? Yeah, do you exactly. Use that? Well, so that's the whole point of us getting together, and we just thought we'd do so this video. But um, we, we, yeah, once the yeah. camera goes off, we're this still is right. We're going to be doing this for ages yet. So yeah. <laughs> you got off lightly. See you guys. Cheers. Hi guys, so we're back here at Final Post and I'm here with Shane, obviously. Uh, thank you so much for that interview. That was amazing, actually. Really insightful. So, um, but now let's move on to essentially what's in your data wrangling kit. Um, it's fascinating when I talk to people like yourself to see essentially what their workflow is and what sort of kit they carry around with yeah. them. So what have you got? Well, um, I guess one of the things that I mentioned before was just how critical that handover from production to post is. And so, you know, it's not always convenient or, or available for production to have a full DIT or you know with a lot of equipment on set they can only you know afford one person and some basics so rather than uh, cutting the wrong corners this is sort of the minimum kit that we would recommend people take on set um, or perhaps you know you're shooting on locations that are remote or really small and tight and you can't take you know a big rolling uh, system on set so the the basic elements are obviously you know, a powerful little computer, such as this little MacBook right here, mm -hmm. uh, that has software on it. So we, we use uh, Yo Yoda ID for our copying. It does all our verification and reporting and things like that. So it's a great little program. Um, we have another box that's got, you know, all of our cables and card readers and things like that in it. So, you know, we'll just get some of these out. Oh, good. Red mag. Red mags. You know, good old yep. we have a USB thing there, texters. These are really important, elastic bands, mm. lots of colours. Uh, like a yellow little box of doobie wackies. It's just stuff, you know, yeah. you just never know what cable, what card reader you're going to yeah. need. Yeah, cool. uh, one of the other really important things is just like a, a camera sheet, camera report is 
uh, incoming file report and these paper reports, we live and die on because yeah. as much as we love technology and computers, mm. they do fail from time Absolutely. to time. And uh, this is our sort of triplicate check. So that every role that's been you know, dumped into the computer, how many files, the size, all that sort of stuff. So Terrific. really critical piece of information. Right. Now because I'm a colorist, I like to make sure that you know something like this, a little Cameline chart, yep. is somewhere on set. Although you know it's strictly a maybe more of a camera department thing, but you know, I always encourage my cam guys to, or my camera department, to have one of these yeah. as well on set. Very useful, actually. It's good. Yeah. You got to be proactive sometimes, yeah. and, and it makes your life easier. It does. When I handle all the rushes for you, yeah. or once I say sorry, not the rushes, but the edit. The that's right. Yep. So yep. that's just you know something else to think about. And then one of the other really critical parts is obviously your storage because mm. this is where those precious files are going to end up, right? Mm. And uh, you know you can never take for granted how much value has gone into those pictures. All yeah. of the production crew, all the design, you know, everything mm. all ends up on one of these on one fellas. Of these things. So uh, I really like these ones. These are waterproof. Mm. They're uh, they're fast, um, and they're you know they're small, so you can take these. Uh, you know, we, we recently did a show that was was on a boat, mm. and um, you know, you don't want your files to end up getting splashed. You're going in and out to the boat on a on a little dinghy. Yeah. Uh, you know, these these are really cool. So cool. Awesome. they're fast, they're waterproof, they're super rugged, um, and that's kind of the essentials yeah. of uh, of what we recommend. You know, as just for the data wrangling, getting those files secured, which mm. is the first most important step. Mm. And then obviously being handed over either to a, a DIT or a post house to do all the processing for dailies and rushes, and then editorial and you know the rest of the pathway. So this is kind of, this is it. So there you have it guys, just a little insight to the important facets of post-production. We will be meeting with other industry professionals in the coming episodes with more stories from DOPs, VFX artists, editors, directors, producers, and so much more. So leave us a comment and let us know what you'd like to see. Until the next episode, see you later, and thanks for watching.